do not disturb or down volume. Aha. Uh -huh. Hey everybody. We uh, are finally live. There it goes. Aha. Uh -huh. Hey everybody. We are finally live. I apologize. Sounds like I do that a lot. It's uh, always a technology thing. It's not even a technology thing because everything worked really well, set up perfectly, but the problem was just time. <laughs> yeah. So we had to haul all the equipment out here to the whelping facility, get everything set up for puppy time because that's all you guys really care about this week. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. This is not about us. That's why we're wee, itty bitty, bitty, bitty in the bottom of the corner of the screen. But unfortunately, guys, um, we can't 100% plan all of this, so I'm hoping that they uh, decide to wake up at this point. You get to... See them sleeping. <laughs> ask some... Uh, ask some... <laughs> hey, thanks, Kelly. I already hit record. <laughs> <laughs> they know you too well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right. So, uh, this week, folks, we've got kind of a fun one. We get to do this on occasion. The biggest thing that we have going on here is puppies. Puppies, puppies, puppies. And uh, they're being lazy. They just kind of got their playing out, and they're ready for a nap. But that's still cute as heck. And if we need to adjust some things, like go shake a couple of them and wake them <laughs> up so you can watch them play. We will see what happens. Um, I do want to say I love, we've got some check-ins. Turn your notifications off. Yep, here we go. Do not disturb, please. Da, da, da. But uh, this is uh, episode 59. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Looks like we do have a few check-ins. We've got some, some folks been here for a couple minutes. It says, uh, hi, yo, from the Decox. Hey, guys. And then um, <laughs> countdown to seeing those babies checking in from South Dakota. Hey, Jay. It says, uh, Kelly and Mike. Yeah, Kelly and Michael and GSP Jax are in the house. And then um, Rolf checking in. Where are you all from? We've got um, tracking callers, information, any other check-ins. Oh, here we go. Cottonwood, California. We've got Wisconsin. Uh, it's the final countdown. Checking in from California again. Canada. Woo. More Canada. That's see Manitoba, honey. That's in Canada. Yeah, they actually, on one of them, said Newfoundland, Canada. So I wasn't confused with the California <laughs> abbreviation. Apparently that... Ethan, um, you're funny. Yeah, Ethan's really funny. We did get a super chat already, though. Oh, heck yeah. Let's go ahead and rock that one. <laughs> From Cole Frimmel. Have a drink on me. How's the litter box working? That is a <sighs> great question. Okay, so first of all, this is a brand new experiment for us here at Standing Stone. We've always had um, a single standard whelping box, and we haven't had the additional play space. Um, it's lacked something to be desired overall, but has worked well. We take the dogs out to go potty, but that doesn't work fantastically when you have poor weather, too hot, too cold, raining, snowing, snowing, any kind of combination of just sweltering heat. I mean, is horrible. You puppies walk outside, it's 90 degrees, and they just go, let me back inside, right? You know, it's almost as distracting as any of the bad weather. So um, we got some information. I've seen a few other people do this, but then uh, Charles and Annie, who've actually been on the show, uh, they own Breezy, and that's who we're working with, leasing her directly for those uh, this breeding, which is coming up here pretty soon. The They said that they utilize uh, specifically alpha, alpha pellets. We got dog pellets at Petco or... Mm -hmm. Pet Smart, pet, one, one of those pet, two. Pet, I mean, Petco, Red Blue Dog, Mommy Petco. Yeah, yeah. Red Cat, Blue Dog. Red Cat, Blue Dog. That's what it is. 
Um, that's an Aiden. He, somehow he figured out that their logo. He's like red cat. Is it red cat? I'm red dog, sure. blue cat. Mm. I think it's red cat, blue dog. I don't know, but he knows. Whatever. He knew what it was, and I was like, what are you talking about? There's no cats or do- Oh, look at that. There's, There's a pet cat. On the sign. Yeah, on the sign. So um, as far as the litter box itself goes, it is a learning experience, both for the dogs and for us, and um, we've tried a few different things. First of all, putting it in there, the dogs had no idea what was going on, so you're trying to pick puppies up, put them in there, pick puppies up, put them in there. I put one little turd in there like, hey, this is where the turds go, guys. And that didn't really do anything. Uh, it didn't seem to right away anyhow. It wasn't an instant thing. No, it's kind of, and they sometimes get in the box and start playing around a little bit and picking up pieces of pellet and carrying them around. Mm-hmm. So it became kind of a game. Uh, and one other thing that we've noticed is they have been doing a much better job so going we're on in day and, three. Yep, we're on day three. Yeah. And they've been doing a much better job of going in there to pee mm-hmm. pretty well. I, I watched four puppies run right in, squat, pee, run out to play. Yep. So they, the they figured that out. Now, it's taken three days for them to figure this out so far. And a lot of consistency on our part of you see a puppy doing a mm-hmm. poop dance or looking around to try and pee, pick them up, put them in the box. Pick them no. up, put them in the box. Now, I'd say probably the turning point or the real key, and I mean, uh, blue, blue cat, cat, red, red dog. dog. <laughs> there it is. So um, I would say that the, the turning point and the key ended up being choking down the amount of space because we've got two puppy corrals together here, which is about the space that they've had. And we have tried several different things throughout the days over the last few days. We had a third corral at it or panel set yes. added I was like, to oh, it. give them all the space. They'll love it. No, no. that was a bigger disaster. Yes. So um, we added a crate because they wanted some place to sleep, which makes total sense. And we had put in a dog bed and they slept on the dog bed. I was like, no, 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 no. Let's put in a crate so that they're sleeping in a crate, folks. You're right. That's uh, Except for right now. They're like, we'll just nap in the middle here. Yeah, but they go in overnight. I mean, the, yep. the big difference is here that... Um, for this evening, we haven't even had full like bedding down like this. We've put one pad kind of in the middle, which encourages them more to go to the box because it's cleaner. So I've uh, seen thus far. The other thing here is we choke down the space. We put one corral, the crate, and then on the opposite end of the corral, we had the litter box. And that was just for overnight. So let's make this space smaller and smaller. And that night, it was like... Every potty was in the box. Every poop was in right at around the box. And then they went back in to sleep. So that seemed to really make a huge difference. Um, but all in all, I'm not going to call this a, a complete failure. It's just taken it's taken a little bit more time than I expected. But I am also kind of excited that they're figuring it out. Um, and it definitely gives them a place to go to the bathroom when we have inclement conditions outside where we can't necessarily be taking them out. Um, Obviously, when you go outside, they can do their business anywhere, whereas when we're putting them in this indoor space and expecting them to just go in that one spot, it's a different situation for them. It's It's not just go to the bathroom. It's go to the bathroom in this specific place within your place. And... So I'm going to say probably by next week we'll have a better update. Now, the ultimate goal here is, and we will be doing a, another series. I don't know if specifically which litter it will be. It will be within the next few months. Um, we'll do a whole nother puppy whelping series. We're going to show the whelping facility, why we did, what we did. Uh, we got a couple things to finish up. But ultimately, we've got a door right over here that leads to the outside. And once we have the puppy pen, that's one thing that we're missing right now is fencing. And then the other side of it is grass. Okay. We are trying the the grass tactic. I don't believe it's going to work, but cat is I have super faith. excited. So we, I want yeah. the puppies to have grass, not just a rock pen or dirt or any of that. I want grass. We're going to try and start with sod. Um, I think that that is going to be Bermuda grass because it's, Fairly drought resistant and a little hardier than hardier. buffalo. Yep. Uh, we've got buffalo out here and we've got some Bermuda and the Bermuda seems to hold up a little better because it's going to be a slightly higher traffic area. And then also overseeding with Bermuda to keep it rocking and rolling will be easier, I believe. So 
the um, that is coming soon, and the the litter box thing will probably go away a bit. But it's definitely a fun experiment to try, and it's uh, exciting. So thanks for asking. We have another super chat question from Aaron Mumblu. What is the best score you've seen when running a first-time dog through the Novda course? What is a typical score and day for an amateur and new pup? So I am going to make an assumption that you're talking about the natural ability part, the natural ability test instead of um, the UPT test or the utility test or even the invitational. Um, Now, each of those tests, there are, you know, max scores and things like that. We... As people in NAVDA and judges typically try and say, try and not say, oh, I got a perfect score because there's no such thing as a perfect day. Now, you may have gotten the maximum score allowable and that's awesome, but there was probably still, even though you got all of the points, there was probably something that your dog could have done better, so could have been more perfect, shall we say, but um, that's just a technicality and um, a max score with the puppy test, um, the natural ability test is a 112. And I've seen a 112 from first time handlers, first time puppy runners. Um, I've seen 112s from, you know, professional dog trainers and handlers that have been running dogs forever. Um, even though it's the puppy's first time. And then, you know, dogs have off days, uh, handlers have off days, Conditions aren't always cooperative. I mean, you could have pouring rain and you're still trying to run this puppy test, or you could have almost 90 degree weather and you're still trying to run this puppy test. So, um, yes, natural ability. Okay. Yep, that's what they were specifically And so there's about. definitely um, a lot of things that play a role in how test day goes, as well as, you know, if you're traveling and your puppy doesn't travel well, and then they're showing up to this test and having to stay focused and concentrated throughout the day for all the different parts of the test, that can really affect the puppies. Um, you know, they are puppies, and it is a puppy test that is run before the dogs turn 16 months old, and it's a lot to expect out of them concentration focus-wise from you know, all-in-one in one day standpoint. So, um, I think that this question is a difficult one to answer because you, I've seen 112s. I've seen lots of 112s in a day, and I've seen days where nobody prizes or only one dog prizes, and it was a tough day, and mm-hmm. everyone acknowledges, man, we had some tough conditions. It was super windy, which made the tracking really difficult, or super hot and super windy, which made the tracking really difficult, or it rained all day, so puppies were catching birds, and they weren't pointing birds, so um, the scores can just really be all over the place. Uh, Ethan's going to go adjust things on the puppies. Give you a cute close-up of those sleeping, snuggly puppies. Since they aren't really romping around, once they get up and start moving around again, we'll open up our camera angle so we don't miss any of the action. But hopefully that helped answer your question, Aaron. Um, I just want to make a a quick note to everybody that is listening. I know you all are here to, to learn and ask questions and have fun, have a drink with us, everything else. Um, this is not a solicitation place, right? So if you've got puppies to sell, that's not the place here to hound people about. All right. So I did remove a couple messages. That's why folks, it's just anybody that starts spamming stuff, you're going to go away. Uh, I didn't even see that. Yeah. Good. Just trying to do a little moderating here. Yeah. Um, and then it says that the, somebody's saying here that the Bermuda grass handles the urine too. Ooh, so even better because that's one thing acidity. that acidity. You have to watch for with grass a lot of times with lots of dogs peeing on it. So we had a super chat here from Michael. Uh, I'm going to butcher that bad. Gamaro? Gamaro. Gamaro. Jiminy? I think Gamaro. Gamaro. All right, Michael. Uh, It says, oh, messed up. I was looking back. I was looking for your question. It didn't show right away, but I see it now completely. So go ahead. I messed up the super chat. Ha ha. First time. I have a one-year-old GSP at training now. I get him back in June. I'm worried about potty training. Any advice? Oh, coming back from training, struggling with getting back in the swing of your routine routine. on house training and things like that. So, you know, I'm not necessarily sure where your dog is at and what the kennel setup is for 
their specific training facility. Um, we at our facility try and set up our kennel as much like a house as we can, where the dogs have the expectation that they're going to be clean in their space and their kennel runs and their crates. And then they get opportunities typically every two to three hours, um, to go out. I think three hours is the longest window throughout the day, uh, that the dogs don't get an opportunity to go out. Yep. To go to the bathroom. And then they go outside into a fenced-in area to get to run around a little bit, go potty, then come back in and be clean in their space. Do accidents happen? Sure. Um, but the expectation is that they don't happen, and we set them up for as much success as we can by saying, okay, you're a puppy or you're a younger dog or you're struggling with some bladder control, so we're going to get you out in the group that needs to go out first. You're an older, more mature dog. You can be patient and wait your turn. You're going to go out in a group three to go out and go to the bathroom. So we have groups of dogs that get along well together, that can play and entertain them, Um, not entertain themselves, but get to socialize a little bit, build some confidence, which is something that we see this helping with, Um, that group mentality. Go out, go potty, come back in, be clean in your space. Now, I'm not, like I said, sure what your training facility setup that your dog is at, but typically a one-year-old has pretty good bladder control, especially going into training, you know, if they had had a good start on that potty training, um, that they should be continuing to be successful, but we always recommend the transition home is important to, I don't want to necessarily say treat them exactly like a puppy anymore, Um, but kind of set a routine. Don't just give them free reign of the house because if they are going to have an accident or you see them looking like they need to go potty, that's a time to interrupt that. Say, hey, 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 let's go outside. Show them that this is how we act in the house. This is where we go out to go potty so that you can get them outside, have success, and then a few days of that hopefully will get them back in the swing of things of going out to go potty um, back at your house like they have been in the past. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. He's outside in a fenced kennel with a dog box. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, realistically, I, I, we don't sugarcoat much. Uh, much, excuse me, folks. So, uh, I'm going to say realistically, you you probably are going to have a little bit of a struggle. But what I would recommend doing when the puppy comes back, uh, you know, and puppy, it's a it's year a year old. old now, right? So, when your dog comes back to you. Treat it as if it is a brand new puppy for that reintroduction to your house. That's what I was, yeah. That's what I was saying. Oh, Basic, I'm sorry. He was ignoring me. No, I wasn't. I was his, just... He turned his wife ears off. That's okay. <sighs> I'm sorry, but that's that's the reintroduction will be the key. So. Yep, and just tr- treating them like they don't know your routine at home and getting them out when you expect that they go, they're going to need a potty break. All right, so I've got something really cool that I'm going to try and pull oh, up. I just hit my headphones on the speaker. Sorry. What's up? I just hit my. I went with oh, that. ooh, don't do that anymore. God well, I'm man. sorry that you okay, asked what so I did. I want to show you guys this here. Let's see how fast I can get it pulled up. Well, he's taking a little bit of time to do that. I want to tell you guys something else that's really exciting. Um, So this setup that took us a little bit longer to get configured because, A, we had to haul all the equipment from the house where we normally do our Yawas to the whelping facility, and we have not only one, but two camera systems set up so that you can see us and the adorable puppies that are, you know, being a little bit sleepy. That's not plugged into anything. Yep. There's that one. You need. No, it's dead. Oh. Worthless. <laughs> Worthless. Anyway, and I've got enough battery. I'm good. Um, but we have lights set up so that we've got good lighting on everything. We've got the audio equipment. All of this is set up, and it could only be done through the support of our patrons from Patreon. We very much appreciate you guys. And. We have, again, over 500 patrons right now, 500 and I think 25 to be exact, if I remember right. Yeah. Yeah, and we do. Uh, is, that, is that the exact number? 
I right thought it was second. when I looked earlier. Today. 525, baby. Which Woo! is awesome, which means we've continued to meet our goal of having 500 patrons and having one lucky patron join us on Yawa once a month. So next week, we are going to be drawing, selecting one lucky person from the people that are actually interested in joining us. I'm not going to force anyone from Patreon uh, to just have to call in to us. Um, and then we'll be able to answer their questions live. We did that last month. It was really fun um, to be able to interact with one of our patrons that way. And we also have a new goal on Patreon, which I wanted to just briefly mention. Mm-hmm. Um, once we reach 1,000 patrons, which we're at 525 now, guys. It'll it's a little probably ways take from a now. little while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But... We Our average growth is between 80 and 100, give or take, patrons per month. So at this rate, it could be a spring event next year, but... And sometimes it, it seems like at the end of the month, a few people decide that they're not going to rejoin or their cards are expired or something happens. Oh, my happens. goodness. Did you see this? Uh-uh. We got another super, super chat. chat for okay. <laughs> a big super chat. I wonder if that's... um. MX, like Mexico, Mex- like the Mexican dollar? I don't have any idea. I bet, because if you scroll up, the rest of them didn't say MX. So I wonder if that's a, t- a form of currency, I guess, if you will. Um, but let me just finish this little thought, and then we'll get on to that super chat. But... Um, what was I saying? You interrupted me. You No, you were talking the about the 1,000 patrons. Oh, yeah. Sorry, babe. So... Um, some people drop off, then we gain some more patrons back, like Ethan was saying. Um, but once we reach a thousand patrons, one lucky patron and their dog is going to get the opportunity to come out, join us for a seminar of their choosing, um, all expense paid trip out here. And we're going to get to work with you over the weekend in that seminar. So we're pretty excited to meet one of our patrons that way. Yeah, I did have a small heart attack. I think it is uh, a currency conversion thing. Okay. So I was like... <laughs> One hundred and twenty nine dollars. What? That, that's a that's a big super chat, y'all. Go ahead and let's jump into that. But uh, I think it says I'm about to build a dog kennel for four dogs. Uh-huh. Could you do a video about a dream kennel and recommendations, specifically about measurements and materials? So that's a good question. Um, are you doing an indoor kennel? Like an so indoor only facility. So I can I, I think I can kind of answer this answer one, all right? So uh, this is a thing, right? If I were to have Oh, you should have been zoomed out. Uh, there you can just see him right on the edge. I, what did he do? He was itching himself and, and flopped over. Fell over backwards. Okay. Zoom back out. Quick. Because people don't really care about us, they just care about the puppies. I mean, let's be real here. All right, so my go-to, depending on exact climate, is going to change the insulation factor of the building itself. But more insulation is good from a hot and cold and a whatever standpoint, no matter what. So what I would do if it were me and I had a handful of dogs only, right? Because obviously you can say what I would do, it's not at all what we have. But my go-to would be a slab. You have a raised up slightly portion on the inside of the building, okay? And I'm talking like dimensions. I don't have exact building materials, but you need approximately a four by five area inside. You need an aisle way to walk. And if you want to do, if you just have the four dogs, I would just do this off one side, um, but potentially have the opportunity to expand at some point in time otherwise. But I would do indoor outdoor runs. And I would have the four by fives on the inside. And then on the outside of that, you would have a approximately four by 10 kennel run. Then you would have indoor, outdoor flipper flapper doors with suicide. So if you need to lock them in, you can for any reason. And then inside the building, you can put uh, like a mini split. All right. So heat, air conditioning is there. So you have climate controlled inside. Dogs have the ability to go outside. Now, this is the big kicker. I would make your outside not solid concrete. I would do half concrete, and then you can have the building have like a little bit of an overhang for a shade standpoint. And then the the farthest outside edge would be 
rock. That's natural material, gives the dog a little more comfortable place. It's easier to clean. The dogs would get used to going to the bathroom on the rock itself, but you would need that to be fairly deep, like uh, really deep, and two, three foot, or bigger rock that they're not going to be able to just dig up, something, um, some combination of that. I've seen a couple different options, but essentially then that can be rinsed and sanitized and everything else. And then all of that being said, you'd have, I mean, you could easily do four, or if your dogs get along, you could do just two runs. It depends on how big you want this project to be. But that would be my go-to. If I just had a handful of dogs and I wanted a simple building to be able to, here you can be kenneled for a little bit while we're out of town or while we're, you know, working for the day or whatever it may be. It'd be indoor-outdoor runs exactly like that. Uh, buddy, my mic has a setup almost identical to that. So it's, uh, that would be, that'd be my go-to. If you want me to draw that on a napkin or anything, <laughs> I can do it. So we have another super chat from Alberto Malvarez. Hey, just want to say thank you to both of you. Over a one and a half years ago, I picked up a, uh, sorry. My first bird dog. Yep, I know. It okay. kind of goes from one comment to the next, so following it. So uh, over one and a half years ago, I picked up my first bird dog, a GSP. Amazingly enough, I was able to run into your channel. I've learned so much from you guys. I was able to train my puppy following your program, got connected with Navda, and got my pup an N.A. title. Awesome. Oh, yeah. It was awesome. Enjoyed an awesome hunting season and killed about 70 pheasants this past season, training for UT now. Holy crap. Because of you, I was able to steady my dog to wing shot and fall and also force fetch my dog. The results have been amazing. I now feel prepared to continue to train at my local chapter. Thank you so much for all the content that you share. I wish I could do more. Just wanted to stop by and say thank you. Well, thank you. That is awesome. That's freaking that awesome. That makes us feel really good, actually. Uh, we love putting out the videos. We love putting out the content. And it's people like you that show your appreciation and tell us how much value those things have for you that – makes us stay passionate and want to keep doing this because it it does take time if you if you can believe it and so uh, and as as we've seen recently putting out real content for people to watch can stir the pot a little bit yeah yeah uh, but those things die hard so um nonetheless we we definitely appreciate the fact that you tuned in here and told and us how how well things are going. So. Yeah, that's awesome. And, I mean, your first bird dog, you were able to train for the natural ability test, take hunting, and gain a ton of experience because that's so important. Absolutely. I mean, birds make a bird dog. We talk about that all the time. And then after that season, you're able to start the more advanced training to prep for utility, which is which is awesome. And any level of utility dog is one heck of a dog. Whether you prize, whether you don't prize, the mm -hmm. training, the obedience, the time that you put in, they are going to be an even more polished dog for you next season. So that's that's really awesome. Absolutely it is. All right, so uh, I found what I was looking to show you um, here. I think what we're uh, looking at, this is a, a new design that's you going to end up. I know, I'm going to get it closer. I'm just, I'm getting there. God dang. Okay. 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 This is a new design, which when you, you do it that way, it gets cut off a little bit. Let's see. Too blurry. Back up. Oh. Focus. Focus. What, 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 what. Okay. So I think I can do this. Give me a second. We're going to use technology to make something really cool happen. Well, I want to answer one of these questions that somebody asked about on Instagram of which puppy was shock in there eating with her little friends, and that was puppy number seven. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you should definitely be following us on Instagram and be following some of our cute, adorable stories of the puppies, as well as we put a lot of cute training um, videos and things like that out there. We've got some in, ooh, we've got some IGTV videos, and I've been having a ton of fun with reels. So we have some funny, cute, adorable reels as well. But this is the post that everyone's talking about. Again, it's probably going to be blurry. Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah. Well, it is going to be blurry. Well, I'm going to show it anyway. 
Okay, do but it. But I can't see what I'm showing because you have the screen weirded out. Come on now. So this one, you guys can kind of see. So that post of the puppies eating around the saucepan, Shock got to Shock got to join in the fun, and she ate. It's mm-hmm. not Ethan's tattoo, but no. <laughs> Adam Burks. Don't give him any ideas. <laughs> All right, so that worked, right? On You're his there. lower back from Tyler. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 my my lower back tattoo. What what do we call those? Tramp stamps or Hey now. <laughs> I th- okay. Um uh license plates. So where is it? Uh, I got to add it here. Oh, okay. He's still got to, can't see the bird. Well, as soon as I cut that out, then the audio would be gone for a few seconds. And okay. okay. So there it is, folks. And I see the pheasant. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So now I plop that up on front, right? That's a, I think it's cool. I mean, yays, nays. You can throw it in there. We're not going to hurt our feelings any. It's, uh, it's a pheasant. It's supposed to be running. It is a hand pencil drawing or, or pen or something, something, something. Um, I think it looks cool, and I want to turn. Uh, it says audio went out. No, audio shouldn't be out now. Those are okay. delayed, I believe, because the, the, the push out is delayed. Let me look and see what we're actually looking at now. Okay, so it's it's up here now. Every everybody is good. Everybody can hear. Everybody's. People are saying, "What did I miss? What just happened?" Here is everybody here. Are we here? Hey, hey, hey. It says excellent. Everything's We're back. streaming. Okay. Yeah, everything's back. Okay, good deal. So this pheasant drawn um, by the individual does a majority of the graphic design aspect of stuff for our business. Currently, um, very talented individual. And uh, what we're looking at doing with this is adding, either leaving it black and white or adding some, some form of color overlay to it. And then utilizing that on a patch or a t-shirt, uh, making maybe. t-shirts and then there is one other one but that one has already got a t-shirt lined up so that one you'll just have to wait to see it pop up on the store here uh pheasant be gone so the pheasant is now gone folks sorry pheasant you're gone come on puppies you need to wake up and play everyone's here to see you be uh, yeah. cute <laughs> 400 400 yups <laughs> we're all there now good deal Good deal. Just a bigger puppy pile. Uh, we got another <laughs> super chat there. It says, uh, I'm getting a GSP in three days and was wondering. What were we wondering? Let me scroll back um, and find it. What is the most important thing I should get for duck hunting? For duck hunting? Uh, I think that I was just reading. For to, duck yep. hunting. Those were the rest of the parts of that question. So. Most important thing is you're going to need a crate. You're going to need food, food bowls, Do clicker, training treats. Do you specifically treats. have a video about this? Uh, I have an article. Oh, it's on our website, On our right? website. If you go to standingstonekennels.com, we have a blog. And then under that blog, we actually have um, the number, I think it's called top 10 things that you'll need for a new puppy. And that includes that list of things that I was kind of just rattling off there. Um, but... One thing that I want to stress, which I don't know if that was necessarily in the list, um, as well as I wrote that article a while ago, if you're interested in a waterfall dog, 
Some form of retrieving based toy would be really important as well as a platform for starting some retrieving, steadiness training, place board training, um, because those are things that are going to be important for a waterfall dog. Um, There's a link to that, guys, if you're interested in... The article that yep. I was talking about. I'm awesome. Go ahead and pin that to the top so cool. everybody can find it. Um, but... Uh, we really like Coranda dog beds. They not only work for having a dog bed, but they're a uh, raised platform, so it works really good for place training and can be a simple transition piece to a water stand, things like that that you're going to be waterfall hunting off of. And then some kind of, like I said, small puppy bumper or retrieving toy that's only used for retrieving sessions. So hopefully that's a good start to what you're going to need for working with a waterfall puppy. Oh, we've got a couple more super chats coming in from Pilot Smalls. Ten week old watches everything, sniffs everything, but not showing any interest in pointing, chasing birds five feet from him in our yard. I'm getting anxious. Don't be anxious. Don't be worried. Ten weeks is still pretty young. Um, and we just did Trix's bird introduction I think at like 16 and a half weeks old I would have to look back at exactly how old she was but 16 and a half weeks old and that was really her first opportunity to interact with a bird that way to chase it um, we might have done the positive pigeon drill slightly before that but still at like 16 weeks I think mm -hmm. um, and that was her chasing a pigeon so don't be discouraged at 10 weeks old um that is, first of all, tracking. Your puppy might be looking and sniffing and exploring, which is awesome. They're building confidence, but they aren't necessarily still tracking super well. And what I mean by that is that really fast movement gets out of that puppy's frame of view and they're easily distracted. I mean, squirrel, right? We know all that about puppies. We had a video coming up here shortly that you'll get to see that specifically in relation to a really cool dog training tool for slightly older dogs but you get to see that lack of ability even in an older dog with fast moving objects so yeah yeah for sure um i think that video is coming out friday 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 yeah, yeah. it should absolutely yep. so um don't be discouraged and i would just say take a break from birds don't even worry about it i mean if you have a dog that is been bred to be a bird dog most likely they're going to have very natural instincts that are going to come out when they're just a little more mature. Work on the obedience basics, work on some more socialization, and do maybe a little bit of retrieving with a bumper in the house in a controlled environment and build that retrieving desire and drive. But don't, don't fret, don't freak out if your puppy's not wild about birds at this exact moment or chasing them or anything like that. It comes. Some are just slower to develop. Oh, we got another one here. It says, um, we got our DK puppy last week. He is a poop addict. <laughs> no fun. He goes wild whenever we're outside trying to get at the cow patties. Right now I pick him up, but do you have any other advice? LOL. Well, I could tell you, first of all, I don't know... Um, very many dogs that won't devour cow poop or horse nah. poop. It's kind of like. And I mean, I have had a lot of friends tell me that their dogs get in the litter box for cat poop really cat bad poop. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What? But um, dogs just like to do that stuff and it is gross and redirecting them, uh, maybe keeping him tethered on a long check cord so that you can pull him away from those situations until he's collar conditioned how old just a just last week you got the puppy so a check cord for a lot now um and then as they are older and ready for more um collar conditioning typically 12 to 16 weeks old if you follow all the basics of getting them the groundwork first then you'd be able to redirect them and call them away from those situations and call them back to you so for now Pick your puppy up and also tether them <laughs> when they try and eat poop. Uh, it w but I forgot to even say, uh, congratulations on the new puppy. That's fantastic. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I got all wrapped up in the poop talk because 
everyone it's, it's a dog has been thing. there done that yeah well, well sure that but has, it's a it's a dog thing too like um just a dog person thing <laughs> even if it's the dog's poop or it's uh other poop the dogs are interested in the poop dog people like sit and look at poop like and every dog that poops i'm like oh well how does that look over there well, we've oh, yeah. and we've had people that have on patreon i think that have talked i'm pretty sure that's where this question was um they live Tootsie along rolls in the cat litter box. I, I think they live along a river or something and there's goose poop all along the oh, edge of yeah. the bank and their dog goes out runs down and is eating all the goose poop all the time which again is difficult, um, but no being able why. to call them it's off disgusting. of that situation, yeah, absolutely is <laughs> disgusting. Is the best option. But pretty excited about the new designs, and there's another one. I mean, I could throw it in here. We've already got figured out. We're going to do a, a t-shirt with this, I believe. And I got some. I got a comment in there about uh, t-shirt would be better than a hat. As far as that goes, you definitely see more of the detail. Um, let's see here if I can throw this one in. I'm going to try and do it the Kitty same. Kitty Tootsie Rolls. That's just disgusting. I don't know if I'm going to ever be able to look at a Tootsie Roll the same way again. <laughs> oh, come on now. You you eat um, peanut butter cups now. Yeah, but that's different. That was never related to poop. Okay. There's some truth to that. Let's okay. go ahead and add. I have to this. ask everybody while well, you're getting this set up. Uh -huh. um, who wants to see Shock? I mean, I could pick her up and hold her. Oh, I bet that's only going to take a second to get an answer. Mm, I don't think anybody wants to see her because nobody's responded yet. <laughs> Give the delay a second. <laughs> Yes, everybody's like, me, shock, we do. Okay, I'm going to go grab her because I can't resist cuddling her. All right, this is another one coming through right now, Kung Pao Chicken. Look at that, guys. Isn't that freaking cool? You know, it gives you the unique, this was hand-drawn type of feeling to it a little bit, a tiny bit abstract, but still just really cool art. And uh, what we're planning on with that is a shirt that says rooster, rooster, rooster. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Goodbye, photo. Oh, here she comes. Oh, my goodness, what a fat chunk. Oh, everybody's awake. Everybody woke up. Just in time for me to grab shock. What are you on? They're all going to have to probably pee. Here, let me grab a second. I got my headphones. Oh, we have a failure up front. Yeah, that and that water spot was where their water dish was and hold her for just a second. Oh, she's going to scoot her butt off of there. Um, that water spot up front was the water dish. And one of the puppies grabbed the water dish and flipped it over. Go figure, right? This is as good a spot as any to go potty. Well, it's already wet, so. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, I know. <laughs> that, that, did not last, that did not last long. Well, they could sleep in the crate, but uh, then you guys wouldn't get to see them at all. So. Right. Here Make yourselves big, somebody said, because they want to see shock. Okay, that's easy enough. Let's go. Or make us a little, you can make us a little bigger since the puppies are still sleeping. And, I mean, we can go are big, big. There we go. Hunda! Blurry. Not blurry, just we're blurry. The puppy's not blurry, is it? No, well, she's better now. She was blurry for a second. Takes a second to focus. She was sleeping so hard. Mm. Look at this chunky bunk. She, her rolls have rolls. All this extra skin. All right, baby, turn around and look. Smile at everyone. 
I think she's going to have this, like, slightly unimpressed face her entire life. She does not look shocked. No, she's like, Meh. We were shocked. She's got that cute little white spot on her nose. Mm-hmm. And a very white tail compared to the rest of her, which is something that her mama Muddy has, actually. Muddy um, was kind of grown like this and then got to the point where she almost looks solid black uh oh your legs are stiff baby just relax them i was trying to help pick and you up. uh muddy has that super white tip of her tail too and from a coloration standpoint guys this this puppy is going to be basically roan through most of its body and then you have the solid black patches that'll be solid and at this point still like oh yeah there's a fair amount of color there yeah, when she fully colors out, uh, almost all of that white that you see through her body will be gone. Other than down here on her paw, she'll have like a Michael Jackson paw. Like and this a, one. Yeah. This will be slightly, maybe a hint of white in it. This one's definitely going to be... A little whiter. A little bit whiter. Yep. And then the tail will always be white. Otherwise, this puppy's going to end up being almost solid black again. Um... Somebody said RBF, <laughs> resting bitch face. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. Well, we still love her. Um, and then she is four weeks old today. We have a post going out this afternoon, or well, Did well you post the afternoon. No, the afternoon evening got away from us, and then we were trying to get this set up. So after this, I'll get it posted. A cute post with her. There we go, um, this sleepy baby. And then somebody said that she uh, looks unbothered. Yeah, about most things in life. She's so pretty she's chill. She's a shooter puppy, though. That's pretty. Yeah, it's character. And I mean, and, and Muddy herself is like this. I mean, for the most part. Yeah. Super easy as a little puppy, and um. But the interesting thing is, so we did as much socializing as we possibly could with the other litter. But she's to the point now where they're way more active than she is, and. Picking they're, on her. They're picking on her a little bit. So it's one of those things that she can't have too much more time until she can hopefully catch up a little bit. But that'll be about the time that they turn into velociraptors. Yeah, because they're about at that stage. They're going to be six weeks old on Saturday. And that kind of is the turning point where they turn into a pack of piranhas. Yeah, they have that mob pack mentality. Um, I want to mention that we did get a super chat from Darla Sharp, but no message came through. So, Darla, if you want to comment below with what your question was, I know that that happens to people every once in a while. They try and do a super chat. They don't get their message typed up, and then we um, don't see it. So, oh, Thanks for the licks. If you're into this kind of thing, uh, the puppy breath right now is... Whew, it is there. I mean... I went and got her to cuddle her, and Ethan stole her. So, see how this works? Yeah, she basically should be my puppy. That's guaranteed. Muddy's like my puppy. Shooter was my puppy. So, inherently, she's your puppy now. She's like double whammy my puppy. So, and we all know the dogs that I raised turn out better. So, Quest is my puppy. Trix is my puppy. I was just waiting Nix for you to hit me. Nix is my puppy. And if you were to put them on a list from uh, an overall behavioral standpoint, where would they fall? We're not <laughs> ranking them. <laughs> we don't play favorites. Oh shoot, Annie, you're hilarious. Uh, do we have a puppy treadmill for her? We're probably gonna have to. Dis- we're gonna have to introduce that pretty soon. Uh, realistically, no, but uh, <laughs> that would be kind of funny. What are you doing? Just licking, licking, licking. Okay. Sorry, Darla. I still haven't seen your message come through. So definitely type it up if we missed your question somehow. I don't see it. Oh, snap. Ethan is a bully. I'm not a bully. Come on now. She's like super licking your watch is all slobbery mm. now. Yeah, all the things are slobbery. Puppies. Questy pup would be number one. 
Questy Pup is pretty well behaved. She's the super, super easy. I would take fresh baby over puppy breath any day of the week, though. Yeah, fresh bathed baby in um, next time you draft newborn oh, yeah, 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 baby yeah. clothes Very detergent. Oh, oh yeah. so good. Mm -hmm. Next time you get the opportunity to smell puppy breath, I'm going to ruin it for everyone here. If you don't, spoiler alert, okay, folks? Plug your ears if you don't want it ruined If you don't want to have puppy breath ruined for you forever, do not listen to the next words that come out of my mouth, okay? But for everybody else, next time uh, you are out there sniffing puppy breath, there's two things that you need to have uh, experience of. One, get you some uh, placentas, okay? After birth, all of that lovely goodness, you help clean that stuff up, and puppy breath uh, mimics that with a hint of skunk wrapped up in there. So you, you like know those couple things, then, yep, that's pretty much what uh, puppy breath is. Now, granted, you combine that with this bundle of joy, and it could smell about like anything, and you're like, oh so cute. I want you to lick my face. Even though I don't really want you to lick my face. No. Thank you. You're holding her now. Yeah, she's my puppy though. Just for the record. It's on the record. Let's see here. Oh yeah, she's like now biting at me. Good lord. <laughs> what did you do to her? Uh, case in point, folks. <laughs> extra cord here need a little extra well no just because she was tangled in it for a second she's cute though yeah. i don't know if she's going to be a total turd or if she's going to end up being pretty low-key but uh the last thing that i was going to say with that is do we have any more questions can we answer some questions I thought I saw something about a Drothar one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Five-month-old Drothar, where it says, while training with food is slow and unmotivated uh, without... Wait a second. While training... Perfect while training with food. Ah, missed the perfect word. Sorry, folks, words. Um, slow while training without. Okay. did it go? I'm sorry, y'all. It's also developing a bad habit of biting people on the butt and jumping on counters. How do we address? Okay, so this is a really good one to kind of touch on because it's an extremely common problem, right? Um, first of all, we need to... <laughs> there it is. So, first of all, the... Slow with the training outside of food based training stuff. I want to know, like, so my go to when you have a young puppy, you have uh, the world is your oyster, if you will. You can set yourself up for success or you can set yourself up for a multitude of continued issues. Okay. Um, step number one, we need to teach the dogs how to learn. That being the number one thing that they need to learn as puppies is they need to know how to learn and you need to build a desire to learn and you need to build an understanding that life is about learning and working and training and all of those things wrap up into a dog that doesn't do the stuff that you're specifically talking about okay so unmotivated outside of food there's a handful of things that we can do first of all i like continuing to utilize food for training but meals not extra special treats especially when we have a situation like this but take that meal, so this would be a, a, a fun one that you can incorporate. Take that meal on like your Saturday or whatever day you have off and spread that out through the entire day. So you've got two meals probably. Um, you're going to have meal number one to take from whenever you want to do that meal and training session to halfway through the day. And then the next meal is going to start sometime in the afternoon, work through the rest. Now that's not constant training. That's Hey, we do a few reps and then we go on about our business. 
Now, what that's going to do is leave the puppy in a semi-state of not completely satisfied. So they're going to be more willing to pay attention and work as well as you're going to condition the behavior that, hey, you can get rewarded for doing the things that I want you to throughout the day. Now, at the same time, once you have, now you're bite biting him. me. Bite him. Bite him. Once you have um, that aspect of things figured out and you've done a few sessions like that, you're going to see a little more cooperation. But then understand you have a working breed dog and that working breed dog is independent and is designed to be independent, to be out there hunting. Okay. So we try and breed cooperation and we try and breed all of these other good characteristics of natural ability and natural this, that, and another thing. But ultimately they're naturally supposed to be independent hunters. So we can't be surprised when they're out there independently wanting to do things. If you have a strong understanding of each individual behavior, okay? So we teach using positive reinforcement. If you are not taught, you don't move on from that step. If the dog doesn't fully understand what's going on, you don't move on from that step. And fully understanding would be you can give the cue in a low distraction environment and see the result for what you're looking for, okay? Then we would start collar conditioning. And at five months old, you're probably there if you put the groundwork in for the basic obedience training stuff. You would take that um, five. She need mama. Well, I woke her up, so she probably actually needs mama. Okay, so you take that five-month-old dog that has proven in low-distraction environments that we have an understanding of the cues that are being asked. Now we can start collar conditioning. And when you start collar conditioning, we utilize vibrate. And vibrate is going to be an annoyance. And that annoyance, you're going to see different reactions from every dog. Some dogs are going to pin ears or tuck tail or go, oh, what is that? Um, It's because it's new to them, right? Uh, Some dogs are going to have severe reactions. Some dogs are not going to have any reaction at all. And you're going to be like, I don't even know if they feel it. The difference in that reaction depends on the individual dog's personality. But we're going to teach them one behavior with collar conditioning. Once you have a good understanding of that, then you move to a new behavior. This is the same. This is already a behavior they know, but it's a new behavior to begin collar conditioning. If you have a dog that's overly dependent, we typically spend more time in the early stages or start with collar conditioning for recall. This is something we brought up before, but it's a quick recap there. If the dog is overly dependent or it's around you all the time, we're going to teach the dog to go away first with the collar, which would be to a place board or a dog bed um, of some such, or a crate would work too, but we typically use a place board for this. So there is no set in stone path, but these are kind of more the direction that we would take with an individual dog. Now, with uh, this puppy specifically, I would recommend place training to or collar conditioning to place training first. It sounds like it, right? We're, we're unmotivated. We're counter surfing. We've got biting, biting habits. Now, the next thing about the bad habits themselves, there's a few different things that we show, and this stuff gets all misconstrued by the people that are watching. You can't take one piece of a puzzle. Knock my mic over. You can't take one piece of a puzzle and lay it on the floor and go, ah, oh, the... The Grand Canyon or whatever the picture is supposed to be, okay? You've got one piece, right? And if you are looking at the entire situation, there's a lot of things that lead up to a specific thing or lots of pieces that have to be put together for the whole picture to display itself, okay? So if you're having these issues with counter surfing or biting or jumping on people, we start with some things, okay? Um, Bite inhibition training. Now, a lot of you people say, and we've heard a lot, I say you people, I don't mean you people, okay? A lot of people say, There we go. I tried that, ouch, whatever, and it didn't work. Well, you have a really small window that it's going to work. I'm talking like one, two weeks after the puppy comes home, maybe. Especially with our breed specifically. They become too bold, too confident that they don't really care anymore. But we're attempting And you'll hear mixed opinions. You talk to 100 dog trainers, you're going to get 100 answers. But some level of bite inhibition training is important. Now, understand this. Bite inhibition training does not stop biting. 
okay? It does not stop biting. The ouch that everybody's like, my puppy didn't stop biting me. It didn't work. It's not going to stop biting. What you are doing in that point in time, bite inhibition training, is teaching them how much pressure to bite with is acceptable, okay? Now, the mixed opinions on this matter are you shouldn't act like a puppy or like they're equal. Well, there is some truth to that too, but it is also something that if you can teach the puppy not to bite hard, it gets easier to work through what comes next, which is to teach them to stop biting, okay? So when we don't interact with the puppies properly, you get on the ground, you roll around, you act like a puppy, expect to get bit like a puppy, okay? That is that is their play. That is their way to communicate. That is how things work. Now, when we have proper understanding of respect, manners, discipline, all of those things fall into place and you have a puppy that respects you, um, all of that stuff goes away. So I would guess on average, if you have some, a puppy come and jump on you or bite at you, what is your first reaction, all right? Everybody, throw that in a comment here. Just start typing. Puppy jumps at you, bites at you. What are you going to do? Even if you don't even consciously think about this, you're going to make some decision and something is going to happen. What is that? I'm going to give it a second here, okay? Because super, super subtle things make a huge difference in what's happening and, and the direction that your dog training path can go. Oh, really? What do we got? You're stealing my drink. Uh, well, I just wanted to sip. Come on now. I'm like on a super monologue here. All right. They're coming. Anybody? No takers? Give it, it a couple of a seconds. I know it does delay. take a minute, but I thought we were there. Ouch. You would say ouch. Okay. Stand up and turn away. Stand up and turn away. Okay, that's an excellent no answer. Smack. No smack. Where Are those coming through on there now? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No smack. Okay. What else we got, folks? Anybody else? This is not a, this is, I mean. It's not no, a trick question. It's this not a trick question. I just want to know what everybody's doing. It's not a trap. <laughs> well, it's a trap. I set everybody up for a trap. Push away with no. my knee or leg and leave. Recoil. Then remember to calmly and firmly say no. Get away fast. Walk away from the puppy. No, ma'am, to bites. Got it. So uh, a couple of different no, things that are coming through. No, push down on slight knee for jump up. Yell, jump away. Swing Distract. arms. Distract. Grab their nose. Squeeze. Okay. Knee up if he's jumping up on me. Say no. Push him away. Turn them in the opposite direction. This is good. These are all good things. Okay, guys? Um, this is good conversation anyhow. So what I want to break down here is the basis of what we've got. We've got a few different answers, um, one of which verbal correction, all right? So we've got the nose, the even like it, the ouch can be, depending on how it is verbally expressed, can be a verbal correction. Um, no ma'am to bites, right? There's your verbal correction. The next is we have uh, some mild amounts of dominance, Moving toward, pushing toward, um, kneeing toward, and then physical pressure with the the smack or the muzzle grabs. All of those things are uh, coming through here. What Give else have we got? Give the puppy a toy or okay, an appropriate distractions. Cho chew toy. A distraction is a another redirect. option. Redirect, yeah. Okay, so... Now, I want to break down each one of these and kind of explain. And then we had somebody else t turn away, leave the puppy. Okay, so these are the super, 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 super subtle things that um, that if you are doing correctly can almost instantly end the puppy biting, can almost instantly end the bad behavior. Now, the struggle for this, and I'll explain, the struggle for this is going to be um, these things can end up being individually individual people related, right? So it's going to work for you. Then it's going to work for another family member. Then it's going to work for the next family member because you're going to coach everybody that's in a, that's interacting with the puppy on a regular basis. But new people are still going to be a struggle because 
dogs that meet new people get to improperly interact with them on a regular basis. That's a tough thing, okay? Um, And we struggle with that with our own dogs. And then there are distractions and essentially coping mechanisms to help work through those things, okay? But moving away, even just the dog, that turning away behavior, that's giving to the dog and it's encouraging. Okay, or so pulling your hand away. Pulling your hand away, moving backward, anything. It the encourages them. The slightest movement, yes, is encouraging that behavior to come towards you. The slightest movement towards you, toward them, anticipating. So some of the people that said the knee aspect of things, whatever, um, I, you, you can even take it a step further. If you can pay attention, know what's coming, anticipate that you're moving toward them as they're coming toward you, And they end up learning to move away. Now, it doesn't have to necessarily be scary. That's not the goal here. But that movement toward them is teaching them to move away. Okay? So, I, Kat and I were constantly learning, watching. And I saw something that a lot of people ask about how to teach the leave it behavior. And it was an interesting thing. Because I'm like, all right. I mean, you you can do that pretty quick. But what benefit does that have other than the occasional object people are leave it don't take my shoe or whatever okay so I was watching this video with uh, Caesar Milan which he has a lot of interesting training techniques and um, a lot of them are dog psychology based and things specifically to this I'm like okay that's exactly what we do but then with the he introduced a leave it type behavior um, in a sense of teaching the dog to move away from specific things that they want. And then you can apply that toward affection and attention where this is an inanimate object and it's easier and it is something that they want. So you can, you can work through that. It was very interesting to watch that ideology applied toward stopping biting, stopping jumping, because the biggest thing is like everybody wants a, this drill or this thing, or this something is going to stop puppy biting, jumping, counter surfing, jumping on people, nipping, all of those things. All of those things are, are wrapped into one generalization of behavioral issues, okay? Behavioral issues are created and available or created and in, in there um, allowed to, to be, if you will, uh, because the dog lacks respect for the situation and lacks understanding of how they should properly interact with dogs. With Part people. of that with people, excuse me, <laughs> and dogs, well, but, yeah, but with people mostly here, right? So the biggest thing that we've got to figure out is when these things specifically happen. So with us, a lot of times it can be anticipated, right? You come home, puppy gets excited. You're doing something in the kitchen, puppy's counter surfing, or the dog has been verbally corrected or physically corrected enough times that it knows to do it when you aren't looking, Okay. So all of those things are essentially band-aids, but proper interaction with dogs. And it's like, we don't have issues really with puppy biting. And that's because the interaction between me and the dogs, cat and the dogs is good from day one. So they learn the respect aspect of things. And it's like, we don't like, we don't ever have puppies that bite. We've had one little situation with thunder. It took like one training session. And and with quest, a little bit like kind of because we tried to encourage it to have a video i mean honestly with quest it was like let's uh let her do this a little bit so we can shoot a video of how to stop it you know it's um so but it becomes it's it's more of an understanding of the dog's respect level and place in the pack and what their pack and what they're supposed to be doing okay so anticipating that movement and moving toward them and teaching the dog to move away from you now This is all fine and dandy when you have everybody that the dog interacts with on a regular basis. But the new people, which is specifically what is asked, like guests, jumps, bites them on the butt, whatever. Um, This is where we utilize with young dogs place training. And place training would be our coping mechanism, if you will, to say you are super excited when people come over, right? You, you, You get all everywhere, okay? Go lay down for a minute. And then once you see that excitement of the people, and because it's the same thing when people come over the house. It's not like, oh, hey, yeah, thanks for stopping by. 
and you're back to your business, right? No, it's like instant chatter. It's like, oh, hey, do you want a beer? Or, you know, depending on what's going on, it's like, hey, how's it going? Everybody's chatting and you're talking, you're catching up with whatever the it is. The kids are running around. The kids are excited because they just got there and everything's just, whoo, the dogs feel that and feed off that 100%. So if you can allow them to say, hey, calm down. And when you see that excitement level drop all the way around, then, hey, come out here and play interact right but you now have drastically lower level of energy to to interact with so that helps the other side of it is we just utilize um place training aspect of things in a sense of no you're not going to interact because the interaction aspect of things can develop at this early stage a behavior that you know ultimately ends up being a long-term battle of everybody new gets introduced right we get to meet everybody new and, and we don't do it properly. And then that becomes the, the conditioned result. And it ends up being a very difficult thing to break, a very difficult thing to work through. So um, lots of stuff going on there, but ultimately it comes down to a lack of respect. And there isn't one specific thing that you can do to stop those uh, other than if you call the broad idea of building proper um, dog human interaction and that involves setting quality boundaries and properly you yourself playing properly, interacting properly with the dogs on a regular basis. So I hope that helps. It was a long, it was a, it was a long answer, but. Uh, Darla Sharp asked her question. Oh yeah. The yeah. Super chat. So it says in the thunder video, you had him walk to the door to potty in Trix's overnight video. You picked her up and carried her to take her out to potty. My bedroom is far from the door to let out at night, carry or let walk. That's actually a really good question. It's a really good question. And a subconscious thing that I did. And it was basically reading the situation. So Thunder was awake, active. It was, you know, 24 hours in the day of the puppy. And he followed me outside really easily. Tricks, a little sleepier, a little harder to get going. And I definitely didn't want her to have an accident, even though our door was close to where we were keeping her in a crate in the bedroom. Um, it was one of those things where I just wanted to get her out, have success going potty, then come back inside. Um, and sometimes with puppies, when we have them in the house like that, those nighttime potties, they go out and then they're coming back in and then they're like, ooh, time to play. Well, no, mm -hmm. it's not time to play. It's time to go back in your crate, settle down, go to bed. We don't want them romping all over the, the room, getting into anything um, or messing with the other dogs that are sleeping on the dog beds. Um, so it was kind of an unconscious decision to do that. Picking your puppy up, especially if you've got a long way to go, is what I would recommend. A, they just woke up and they're like, oh, gosh, I got to pee. And walking from that kind of a distance, they're like, they're not going to hold it at this point, um, especially in the beginning stages. As their puppy bladders develop and get better, um, and throughout the daytime when you're showing them, hey, this is where we're going out, this is the door that we're using to go out and potty, that would be something that um, I would recommend having them walk uh, to that door and calling them that direction so that they can learn to show you and tell you when they need to go out by going to the door that they've already learned to walk to during potty breaks. That's a great uh, question. It's, uh, and, and that is the exact answer. I mean, it's like ultimately they need to learn where the door is to go, but in the beginning stages, a lot we of times they're going to make success. it there. Yeah, they're not going to make it there. So. And the success is the important part at that point. Man, I'm sorry, y'all. We this 7:30 time frame, and uh, we're I mean we're about out of time for this evening. I have already. to answer just a couple little quick ones. Okay, Somebody but asked. The, the, I apologize for the puppies. They've been lazy. No, that's no oh. fun to just watch them sleep. Yeah, sorry. We'll do it again. Uh, probably not. Well, maybe. I mean, it just depends. We we'll see. We'll do it again for sure. Try and get them on a little more active. <laughs> we'll get some itchies. Got a little itchy face from Pinch. Let's see if I can zoom um, in on that a little bit. Somebody, I can't remember where I saw it now, asked if we're keeping shock. Yes, we're keeping shock. And when we get done with this, Yawa, bop on over to Facebook and or Instagram because I'm going to be posting a cute, cute little post about that situation here as soon as we get off of this. Yawa chat. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and then I also wanted, there was another question from, 
Michelle Vasquez. Kat, how are you and the baby doing? You look and seem fabulous. Hope everything is smooth sailing to the end. Any better time frame on when I am due? So um, definitely reaching that, you know, like end of the pregnancy uncomfortable phase um, and excited to meet this little guy. But uh, my due date is May 22nd. Um, th- that may be a little sooner. I mean, when I had Aiden, I was, um, we had him at 37 weeks. So there's always a chance that I could go early. I'm at 36 weeks now. So soon ish. I mean, in the next month, (laughs) we expect a baby to arrive. Yeah. that's it. I mean, we're exactly 30 days out from a due date. So hopefully anytime between now and there. Yeah, basically. So, uh, but everything's been going great. Measuring great, uh, heart rate, blood pressure, all the, all the things that they check. So excited to meet this little guy and Aiden's excited to be a big brother, I think. Well, folks, it was a fun one. Uh, puppies were sleepy. We had some really good questions and as always, we appreciate you tuning in with us. I think that's all the time that we've got for this week. Thanks for sticking with us and, uh, lazy little puppies. <laughs> Folks, I'm the guy with the pink gun. I'm Kat the dog trainer. And we'll see you next time.